everybody. Happy, I think it's Labor Day weekend. I'm Gay Ann Bruno. I'm the host and producer of Between the Sheets podcast. Thank you for joining us this Friday. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. Like our Facebook page, Between the Sheets podcast, and follow me on Instagram. Tonight is a great show. It's, you know, this show is all about women. Not that I don't have men on, but it's about women empowerment. And we always try and we're all over the place. And I really do agree and and, and on everything that we are all doing, we're all separate individualistic women trying to make it in the world. And um, the more important part is that we actually support each other. And I think the more women support women, the more things can have a change in this country and in the world. Because let's face it, women, we know what the fuck we're doing. Uh, seriously, just saying. But um, it is Friday, September 4th. And um, we have a wonderful guest tonight. Uh, she's an octogenarian. Um, some of you do know her. I will tell all stuff about her later, but I want to check in with the girls. We have Mara Shane. Mara Shane, how have you been? Unmute yourself. <laughs> okay, Mara. Hey, Kirk, can you unmute? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I actually, I'm sure a lot of friends wish they could do the mute button on me a lot <laughs> for my sister. Um, but yeah, I've been doing good. I've been um, exercising five times a week and eating on a clean diet and really having, um, really taking control of my health. And that makes me feel good. That's you, you know, you look beautiful always, but if whatever you do makes you feel better and more confident, then we all support you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I know, I, guys, we got to get in this studio. This is like fun, but not so much anymore. Um, Cara, Cara Noble. Hi. Yeah, I've been um, I've been working in my garage, making myself a mosaic workroom. Is it gay garage or garage? What are you doing? Garage. <laughs> garage. <laughs> no, English actually say garage. Garage. Oh so, yeah, I've got now rows and rows of all my different colors and broken crockery and my bits and pieces. And I'm going to start my next mosaic soon. And what are you doing? Where are you starting it? I'm going to do like mid-century modern into 60s. I don't know how or what I'm doing yet, but I've, I've got some great colors and crazy pieces. It's going to be amazing as always. And then we have Kimberly Sanchez. Hi. <laughs> I've been gone for a minute, so it's nice to be back. Any news or anything you want to spread with joy? How's work going? Oh, boy, as fuck. <laughs> Well, we did go out to do, we did have dinner last night. So it was nice to see, it's so funny because I put on Facebook, hanging with my home girls. And it was so nice to see at least two or four of the few. Um, and Cara, we will be coming to your house real soon. Don't you worry. Um, and then the newest and youngest <coughs> lady on the list and on the panel, um, my niece, um, and it's not really nepotism. We're not really related, but I feel a kinship to her. This is her second time joining Between the Sheets. She is an old soul. Um, and uh, Alana, Alana, what the hell is Alana? You know, it's <laughs> funny that you say Alana because that's what my grandma wanted to call me. Seriously? So my mom, yes, my mom named me Alana. And my grandmother, who you've heard a lot about, wanted to name, she said, well, no, it's Alana. My mom said, well, if you call her that, she's not going to turn around. <laughs> but whenever someone says Alana, I respond. So thank you for calling me Alana. <laughs> well, you're welcome. And it was really funny just to say about her grandmother, who I do not know, um, but it was funny because the minute she popped on tonight, the way she looked, I said, oh my God, you look just like your grandmother. So I think she was probably channeling through me the Alana part. Yes. Of Definitely. Yeah. And the pictures you've seen of her, I think I do resemble her a little bit and I'm very glad for that. Awesome. Well, welcome yeah. again to the show and I'm glad you're back and yeah, I'm, glad we didn't, you. I didn't, I'm glad you didn't get scared off by the lunacy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Never. So you can't scare me. <laughs> so here we are. We have this stylish woman, um, founder of Amazing Women in Action. Um, she is, she'll tell you her age. Can I tell you your age? 81, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow is her wow. birthday of Virgo. Um, she has, she's an author, a speaker, a mentor, a business coach, and quite frankly, wait till you hear the stories, an adventurous woman. Uh, yes. <laughs> her first business went from zero to seven figures um, when everyone said she couldn't. She fought all odds. Um, she's been fighting for women's rights all her life. Yeah. A lot. At finding a voice, stepping into power, and making people's dreams or assisting people's dreams come true. She's a grandmother. 
uh, six, six, seven, seven, and seven. one grandson. So that's a total yes. of seven. You have two daughters. Yes. And, um, you know, it, find a deep voice that wants to come out and declare I'm here. And she is here. And yes. um, she is here with us. And um, let's see, I met Arlene probably on the phone a while back, as I usually do meet a lot of people. It's the cold calls or whatever. And we had a conversation and um, she was picking my brain really early on about the podcast, um, even before this incarnation. Um, and then the next time I saw her was with Kim. Uh, we were going to an art gallery opening and I parked my car and there was Kim Sanchez and there was Arlene and we were all going to walk in together. And then I got a call from another friend saying, wait for me. But, you know, we chatted a little bit. And then after I think we made a few calls and then we saw each other at the Pates. And um, then, you know, when I started my uh, free tarot card business, um, Arlene was one of my first clients and clients, uh, readings. And um, from that reading, probably before, after the reading, because I wanted it to be very like neutral because so, I didn't want to know her. Um, I did the reading. And um, then after the reading, we talked, what, two, almost three hours one day. Oh, yeah. We, we were chatting away. And she's an East Coaster and I'm an East Coaster. And you know the way that goes, because you guys, I, you guys want to put a mute button on me all the time, I'm sure. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> but um, but this is, um, so this is Arlene and I've been wanting her to be on the show. So of course, Arlene, why don't you first start telling us about, let's start from the beginning and then we'll go backwards about the amazing woman in action that you've created. Well, the amazing women in action years ago, I needed to learn how to do survey monkey. Okay. I am not a technical person. I got to tell you, if I hear technical, it's like, no, get me out of here. So I, somebody said, call up this woman, Leslie. So I called up this woman. I said, could you help me? So we start chit chatting and she's like, she's a grandmother. She's a hot air balloon pilot. And I'm going, oh my God, that's what you're doing. You're a hot air balloon pilot. Well, you know, I've been up in a fighter jet and I've done this and we're like, Oh my God, we're amazing women. Bam, amazing women in action. And that's where that came from. So I, we started it and I started interviewing women because I want women to tell their stories. That to me is like the biggest thing. There needs to be, tell your story so other women can say, I, I'm, I'm who she is. And if she could do it, I can do it. And if she's inspiration. So I started doing it on Skype, but Skype was so bad. It was like I was pulling hair out of my head from Skype. And then I stopped it. And then I just said, the heck with it. I'm bringing it back again. So I have a Facebook group called Amazing Women in Action. Wow. And that's that's how that got started. So, I mean, I'm going to bring up your history. If, if I mean, we didn't really talk about what's taboo, but I think you're like me. Our lives are an open book. Yeah. You originally, like, you know, you were married with, like, obviously a man and children. Um, and... Um, when you were married, I mean, were you were you an entrepreneur back then or were you the atypical wife? wife uh, I was the atypical wife. I got married. I was 20 years old. I had my first daughter when I was 21. The next one is 23. You know, all I was programmed, especially in those days, was to, you know, get married and have kids. In fact, at one point, I went down to see my mother and she's going to bingo. And she says, why are you here? You don't even like bingo. And I said, mom, I'm not happy. She said, you have children, you have to stay in the marriage. So I stayed in the marriage for 19 years. You know, so it was to me, it was like probably 17 years too long, but yeah. whatever. Cause I had no place to go. There was no support system. You know, where was I going to go? The only book about raising your kid was Dr. Spock. You know, <laughs> there wasn't all this, it, there was nothing to, nobody to encourage me, nobody. And I didn't want to go, where was I going to go with my kids? I didn't want to live with my parents. We didn't make a lot of money in those days. So it was like, where was I going to go? So I stayed in the marriage. So actually he met somebody that said, what are you doing in this marriage? And he left and it was like a shock because I had planned to leave when my kids were both in high school. I mean, out of high school, you know, ready to go into college. So, so then, and I was all, and uh, when I was about nine years old, I had this, it's called my, uh, ET moment, you know, when ET touched. So my ET moment was with women that we grew up, there were three of us that grew up and um, they wanted to say, look, I'm getting boobs. And I like went like this and I'm like, oh, magic touch. I think <laughs> I like women. 
<laughs> at nine. nine. That was nine. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But yeah, but there was nothing. You know, what was a gay woman? It was like I looked like a man. I didn't know from anything. I didn't wasn't around that. I didn't see anything. I didn't know. So when we broke up from the marriage, I'm segueing into what happened. When I broke up with the marriage, I started actually going to the to the bisexual center. And I saw in a magazine in San Francisco that there was a women's gathering from the bisexual center. I said, I'm going to go. So if I tell you I smoked the joint, I was high as hell because I was scared <laughs> to death, that I walked in and there's all these women, I'm like, besides myself. But then I joined the center and I was the social director. I started women's support group. And so I got really active in the bisexual community. Now, do you, do you still, do you consider yourself bisexual now or gay? Yes. Bisexual? No, I, all, I, I will always, I will always label myself bisexual. Whether or not I choose, I don't choose to be with men anymore at the moment. I'll never know because I judge people for who they are, not, you know, what's between their legs. So, but I, I really prefer being with women. I'm not interested in being with men right now, but I still always will label myself as bisexual. So how did you get involved in the LGBT plus community? Like what, like this, like you, I know you went to the, the group and, but then how did, like, what have you done for them? Because, you know, I mean, I came out, God, in 1986 and I was, I don't know, 22. Um, cause I didn't know what the, I was. I thought I was straight for years or bi. No, I used to call myself bi cause I, I hadn't been with a man or a woman. So I thought, well, since I haven't figured it out I'll just call it bi cause I haven't done anything. And, um, and I got very involved also in the beginning with ACT UP and the movement, but not really labeling myself as anything. So how did, how did you, what have you done? What are your, I guess, your achievements that we should all, every women, bi, gay, straight should thank you for? Because I know there's a laundry list of stuff that you've done. There's a lot of stuff. I was in a book called By Any Other Name, B-I, Any Other Name. I've been out there. I've been on television about being bisexual. I, I was on Newsweek magazine. There was an article on bisexuality and AIDS. And my story is in Newsweek magazine. I was in the Oakland Trib. I was I was out there. I was all, once I came out, I was out. To me, the closet door was shut. I no closets for me. I have to be who I am. So there was a lot of things I did. I also dated someone that was transgender. And I became very active in the transgender community at the same time. So I have a lot of, there's a lot to my life. It's not that, but there are know. awards and stuff that you've gotten. There are things that you have been um, accredited for. Well, I have to, I, well, one thing I'm accredited for, which I had no clue, is that I took a picture at Gay Pride in San Francisco that is a very famous picture. I had no idea. Wow. And until somebody said to me, uh, can we use your picture? Do you, do you have, do you have, wait, can we use your, I'm saying, yeah. And people are saying, well, you should, it's your picture. You should, you know, get your rights to it. And it's like, I don't give a damn. I didn't even know it was a popular picture. What's it but it's, it's, a, it's a very famous picture out there. Yeah, what no, is it? Where we can find it. Her can find it. Where is it at? You know? Uh, what's, what's it at? If you go under bisexual, Lonnie, L-A-N-I, uh, and it's called, uh, oh shit. If, I, if I'd have known, I would have had a book in front of me and showed you the picture. Uh, Darn. All right. but it's, a, it's a famous picture I took. I happened to turn around and snap a picture and people are using it. And it's like, it became famous. Somebody wants to put it in their book. And so I'm like, oh my God, this is fabulous. In those days, the only there were no really awards that we ever got for anything. What we did as a bisexual community was to become accepted. You know, it was like when we were marching a parade, everybody would yell at us and scream at us, make up your mind, get off the fence, you know, come on, you're really gay. And we were like, no, we're bisexual. So we had a lot of, lot of problems. And so one year... We decided to, we actually won an award for the most outrageous contingent because we did with Mayor Bayan, uh, Princess uh, Bayan, you know, Princess Diane. Diane. So we did a lot of stuff in that. And I was David Bowie. I was dressed as David Bowie with my white punky hair and my silver outfit. And that won us an award, which was like amazing. Well, I have to, I want to segue against this. Tell us about phone sex. 
Oh, okay. Have their phone sex. <laughs> <laughs> was the photograph? Didn't we just see it snap up? Was that the photograph? What? I think we found the photograph. Yeah, Her, that was, is that yeah. the photograph, Arlene? I don't a, see. I don't see anything. Oh, you have to go to gallery view on top. Oh, gallery view because it's a great shot. I actually don't recognize it, but I love those iconic shots. That we where always... is? Where do I go? I have no. You're talking to non-technical. Where do I go? You go to the upper right corner of your screen. It says it should. It say, does it say speaker view or gallery view? Oh, I don't have that. Mine's on speaker view, and I still see it. Well, it's we'll figure it out. I don't want to take time away from this. Yeah, anyhow. So what happened is I was working, I broke up with my husband and I was working in retail and I was one step to being a buyer for Macy's. And I decided to leave because I didn't like the politics. I didn't like the way anybody treated me. And I said, I'm out of here. So I'm sitting at home, ready to go look for a job. And I hear on the radio about this new business called phone sex. And I'm like, I could do that. And why I could do it is because there's an organization in San Francisco called San Francisco Sex Information Hotline. SFSI is what we call SFSI. And it's a place that people will tell kids to call up if they have questions about sex. So I took the training. So I got desensitized to anything about sex. So it did, you know, it didn't, we sit across from each other and say every word imaginable. It, it was, it was like the one part that was the most fun is we were in a room with, now this is the old days when they had regular cameras, the real, the real cameras and the whole table, long table lined up. I don't know how many real, the real cameras. There must've been like 50. And on this wall are all these porn, right? And first you're looking at it going, oh my God, look at that. Look at that. Oh my God, look at that. And then you focus on the one that you like. Oh, I like that the best. I'm going to watch that. And then you're like, when is this over? <laughs> so we got so desensitized. So when I heard about phone sex, I said, well, I could do that. I had no money. I was eating popcorn for dinner. I was living on unemployment. I had a boyfriend that would help pay for my rent. But obviously I borrowed money. I did whatever I had to do to make this business work. And it went from zero because I was at zero to a multi-million dollar company. Wow. Because phone sex was very hot in those days. So that's what made you your millions. Yes. Wait, you- In fact, in fact one year, my, my CPA, he says, do you want to know what, how much you make? Because I didn't know, I had a bookkeeper came in every day and handled all that. And he told me, I'm like, really? Really, I made that much money? Really, little me from Arlene Cranks from Philadelphia never had any money? Really? So it was like, it was wonderful. And my what? family, you know, I did lots of things. Sorry, what? was this, was this a, a phone sex business with like a, you created the name of the business and you started a whole uh, phone sex business? Yeah, I had, I in the beginning, I mm -hmm. did the phone sex because I needed to know what it was, no big deal. <laughs> uh, I hired my friends to come and do the phone sex and mm -hmm. then it became bigger. Then, then we hired like, we had people and I had an office at Hollywood and Vine and we would have all these transgender. They come into these outfits half naked. The building <laughs> kicked us out. We don't want these people. Oh my God, it was hysterical. Around so it year, became a big business. There was a, what, what year was this around? Uh, probably 80? 89. Oh, okay. It was when, Great. it was when nine, seven, you remember nine, seven, six. Yeah, the 976. Okay, numbers. that's when I started, 97. And what I also did is I did a lot of other things. I did cassette tapes, there's cassette tapes in those days. So I right. take my friends and I take them into a studio and I say, okay, we're going to do cassette tape, women for men and women for women. So I would say, hey, Gail, hey, come here. We're going to go do a scene that you and I are turned on to each other. And we're inviting our friend. We're going to do a threesome. So we were sitting there with no script because we were all in the sexual community. You know, it's not like we were sexual, but we were in the sexual community, you know, with Spissy and all that. And it's like, that's what we did. We got in there, we did SM, we did all kinds of stuff. And then I would go to the Women's Music Festival. <laughs> you know, I gotta tell you, women, I tried to sell my cassette tapes and they'd say, oh, we don't need this. I said, don't you have sex? Don't you want a little excitement added into your life? And it's like, square. 
square. <laughs> yeah, none of us are square on here, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't so, think so. So then after you made that, and obviously now you had money to invest, what was your next, what did you, like, sort of, after you did that, like, what did you do with your money? Did you reinvest in something? Did you create organizations? Like, what did the things happen for you after that? Well, what I did is I, a lot went to my, I helped my family, you know, my daughters and my pa parents, I paid for trips. I would have anniversary and birthday parties at the Ritz Carlton and, you know, hired limousine to pick them up and take them to lunch and do fun stuff with that. Um, I invested because I was in the stock market in those days, which was fun. I loved it. It was great. I bought some property. I'm not, I'm not a real estate person. It's like, that was not not for me, but it was fun while I did it. I even bought property in Panama and, and all that, whatever. <laughs> but it, it's not it's not my thing. I'm not a property person. I'm not real estate. I didn't have a mentor. That's when a mentor is so important. I never had a mentor to show me. You know, then that was a big problem. So you know, I didn't know how to do it. But no, then what I really did was what I you did it. It didn't matter if you didn't know. I how did to it. You, you know, I, I you know I did it. But the thing is, is that what I really got to do was to learn more about myself, who I was. So I became a hypnotherapist. I'm a, I'm a master NLP practitioner. I'm a master Reiki practitioner. Uh, I did all these energy healing. I followed a spiritual master doing energy healing, opening chakras. So I kind of explored. I spent a lot of years exploring who I was. You know, who is this person? Because it's the first time I was able to do something like that. So tell us what really amazing woman in action. Like I know you have the web. I know you have the page. What are you doing for women? How like what what does the organization do? Well, it's a page right now. Okay. And what it's a page. <laughs> and what I really you know it's a good question because I'm still figuring it out truthfully. You know, if it's about being honest here, it's like I'm still figuring out what do I want it to be. I really want to go back to interviewing women again. And having women tell their stories because the stories that came out when I did the interviews were like, just blew me away. And I really get into, you know, I'm like you, I listen to what people say. And if they say something, I don't let it go. I'll go further with it and go deeper with it. And some stories were pretty amazing. And it's like, I, it's like, I'm probably going to do that again, but I had big visions to go. I wanted to go to like, well, you're still Good. so young. You've got the whole, well, your whole That's life right, ahead honey. of you. I've got a lot of years left in my life. <laughs> so Every time I love I her energy. My sister's oh my like, Arlene, why are you doing all these things? I say, Lynn, I'm not dead. <laughs> so, I mean, what advice? I mean, having having done everything on your own and not having a mentor, and I'm sure you have you know, throughout the years, mentored others. What, as a mentor, is your advice to young women or any woman starting a business or or putting their life back on track? What What are your key suggestions? You know, a lot of it is to believe in themselves and not listen to the people that tell them they can't. Because that is the biggest thing. Everybody will tell you, when I started my phone sex business, only <laughs> one person stood by me. Everybody else says, oh, you'll never make money. Who's going to pay you for that? And I always say when I drove up in my Jaguar, they kind of changed their tune about who I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, because a lot of women, you know, a lot of women in general, I mean, Kim is a businesswoman, you know, Kim right. owned a restaurant, you know, Cara, um, she used to be in entertainment, but, you know, and Mara is an artist and Alana, you know, she's, um, you know, she's going to be a writer because we're going to work on that, but she's a designer. Uh, like uh, she had a success. Another one. So Alana, why don't you tell Arlene your story? Well, I was actually going to say she is just, she's inspiring me to hear about this because she's lived so many lives and she found this authenticity after she didn't know who, you know, where she was going to end up. She figured it out and she made those moves and she like blossomed into this whole nother person, which to me is incredible. And she's still blossoming. And that is beautiful to me at her age. And she's, there's endless possibilities for her still. I can tell. So oh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at her going, how can I also be more authentic? Because that's what I'm like getting inspired most by hearing this story. And I'm in the corporate world. I get dragged down by men every day, but not that they're bad because you also say in your, um, your page here that to not blame men, which right. I appreciate that. 
because we just were responsible for our own actions, for our own success. So I believe everything you said in your page, I really, really like what you're doing. And I've been trying to figure out a way to pursue something like this in my own life is to get that mentorship, to get that uh, motivation, to get the, the inspiration to move forward in my life. So, you know, dip battling the corporate world, it's been a great lesson, but I know that's not my end game. So, you know, whether it's designing or whether it's writing, I'm like you, I, I want to just fill out every fiber of my being and just really embrace life for yeah. everything it is. And well, that's what I, I was in the corporate world in Macy's. It's like, I, yeah. because they can hire you and they can spit you out. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. I want to be in control of my life. I don't want anybody controlling me. This is my life, my time to do what I life. want. Arlene, huh? I don't think anybody can. <laughs> I'd be, I'm scared of you, sister. <laughs> but I mean, like, but each of us on this, I mean, and, and again, I, I, like the women that, you know, that are attracted to the show, the women that are attracted to all, people like us, all of us. I mean, I think a lot of people I know because the people have said it, they look to people like us who, you know, I have a corporate job. I've been at a, in the corporate world for 32 years. Um, have I loved every second of it? No, but it's not about the creative and the artistic is what, I, of what I'm doing. That freedom is amazing. It's when you have to fit within the box of the corporate structure, yeah. which is probably why I am not running CBS right now because I got a mouth and, you know, <laughs> and, and I don't know how to play the game. And um, some people play it really well. And then there's the honest people who don't know how to play. Um, and I think, you know, it, but there is this business savvy that we have. And I've learned to sort of balance the corporate and the creative. So I like you and I, we all have side projects. I mean, at one point, you know, for four years, I was managing rock bands. I had a radio show. I had a podcast. I was doing three gay prides. I was writing for magazines. I was DJing. And it was, ne I never was tired because I was following my passion. Yeah. I think, you know, inspiration, creativity, all of that seats in passion. Kim, she works in a corporate job. Her heart lies in restauranting. I don't even know if that's a word. Restauranturing, whatever, cooking, <laughs> all right? Cooking, but with a degree. Um, but, you know, but we go through what we need to go through and ultimately, you know, we always strive for that end game, that goal. And I think maybe as mentors, because we all are mentors, because we're all successful here on this. You know, Cara had an amazing entertainment career and she still does. You know, Mara is an artist and, you know, things are starting to break out for her. And Alana, you know, you had that successful line of clothing at a very young age that you made a shit ton of money at your age. And it's, you know, so we sit there and as I think once you follow your passion, you've got to know that you can segment things, but as long as you never let that fire and that light of that passion extinguish, there's always going to be movement forward to anybody, any men, woman, I don't care who they are. I mean, anyone, do you guys agree? But we have, have to be brave to pursue those things. And I think what she's trying to instill into young women is yeah. you have it in you. You don't have to wait for it. You don't have to like wish for it. You can go and do it. So she wants to inspire women to do that. So I, I would love to know more about how she does that and like what, where that comes from and what she says to the people who's, who are asking, how do I find that inspiration? How do I make that move? Yeah, you, you have to, you have to, you have to be stand in your power and be brave and bold. You know, you have that belief. It really comes from your subconscious. It comes from your brain because it's like 5%. You can figure out how to do it. There's a million ways go on the internet. You want to know how, but if it's not in your head, if it's not in your heart, it's not going to happen. You have to push through all the stuff that stops you. You know, when some, my mother, my mother called me up when I was starting my phone sex. I didn't tell her what I was doing because God forbid, I should say I'm in the phone sex business. So it's like, I don't tell my mother, uh -huh. but you know, <laughs> but it was like, you know, um, nobody really knew. All they knew was I made money. I never told them, but you know, my mother would call up and she'd say, and I, she said, how are you doing? And I said, well, you know, it's really hard, you know, trying to put this business together. And she would say to me, 
Well, if you would get a job, you would have a steady check and you wouldn't have to worry about money. And I said, don't call me if that's what you have to say. So until you can get that brave and say to people that are trying to stop you, if that's what you have to say to me, don't talk to me. Or if that's what you have to say to me, you know, say something nice to me. Don't tell me what I can't do. Tell me what I can do. So you need to stand in your power and be brave and open your mouth. And, and don't let, because everybody's going to knock you down. Nobody wants you, truthfully, very few people want you to be successful. Because if you're successful and you make money, then they think, oh my God, they'll never talk to me again. So I don't want her to be successful. It's an awful thing, but that's true. So Arlene, you know, I mean, in starting your business, like the phone sex business, I right. mean, most people have to start business with some sort of capital, some, some money. I borrowed money, honey. I did credit cards. I would call you up and say, hey, listen, um, could you lend me a thousand dollars? I'll pay you 20% interest. And people would say to me, 20%, that's a lot. I said, I don't give a damn. I want the money. I didn't give a damn. I wanted the money. You know, it's like I found an investor. I found a guy, a nerdy guy from Silicon Valley, San Jose. And I, he comes to San Francisco and I said, well, let me show you what my business is. So I took him to Broadway in San Francisco and I took him to the strip joints and I gave him a bunch of quarters and I stuck him in the room where the, where the thing goes up and the woman's nude and doing her thing. And he dropped the quarter and she said, don't pick it up. Don't touch anything that lands on the floor because God knows what's on the floor. <laughs> and I said, that's my business. Do you have a problem with it? And he said, no, okay, then give me my money. <laughs> but, but I mean, you're very self-confident. I mean, even when, you know, things sort of weren't perfect or you were going through some issues, it, you just really believed in yourself and was self-confident. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they're afraid to take that step. They, 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 are mo they, they, they want it, they have the dreams, they have the ideas, but they're in fear. So, I mean, how do you get, how do well, you- Well, that's why mentors, that's why me people, look, I have mentors too. In the beginning, I didn't have anybody. I had nobody. I just did it out of instinct. But I have mentors now. I, you know, we all need them no matter what part in our life we're at, no matter where we're at in our career, no matter where we're at in our business, because we always need somebody on the outside looking in. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't realize I could do that. You know, that, you know, and to encourage, it's like, who are you going to talk to? You can't talk to your family. They don't really want to hear the, the stuff you're going through. Your friends are very judgmental. I mean, this is generalizing, but that's what happens. And it's like, so who are you going to go to? Who's there to encourage you? Who's there to support you? Who's there to give you Robert? Come on, you can do it. I know it. Come on. Let's have, we'll talk again next week. I want you to, you know, go do this. What is it you want? That's why mentors and coaches are so important. You know, has anybody ever win a championship without a mentor or coach? Nobody. Well, it's the same thing in business. Don't you think that uh, that uh, uh, Bill Gates was talking to, what's the guy from, uh, shoot, what's that other guy, the older guy that's been there? Uh, oh, I can't remember his name. But they, they all talk amongst each other. Because they all support each other and they all ask each other questions and they, and they're their mentors. They all mentor each other. Everybody does that. And people have to realize that you can't do it alone. It's, it's a very lonely, very lonely life to go be an entrepreneur. Yeah, it I really like is. I it's a hard it. life. It's not I easy. Felt like I muscled it for so long and I just thought I could do it by myself. And the older I get, the more I realize I want that wisdom. I want someone to provide me a little bit more of their, their know-how and, and what they've been through. It's, I just feel like it would help me in some way. And it's, I just, I can't do it on my own. And I'm now realizing that I, I want some, some muscle behind you it. You can't, know? you really, you really can't. I can't do it on my own. I mean, I have an idea that I'm going to bring next year. That's going to be kick ass. I can't wait to working on it now. I'm not saying what it is, but it's going to be kick ass. I'm excited about it. But it's like, I have to, I talk to people. I can't do it on my own. We can't do it on our own because who's there to listen to us. Who's there to, who's there to support us when we're freaking out. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Who do I buy? I'm going to cry. I can't think I'm going to, we need somebody to say, Hey, I'm here to support you. You're going to do it no matter what. 
I'm here. I'm I'm here to help you, to guide you, to support you, to make it happen. Do you, how bad do you want it? You want it bad enough? You're going to get it. You know, and you want somebody that does that. And if you don't have that person, it's a really hard, hard, hard journey. Well, and I love too the. I love your age, first of all, because, you know, we're all sitting here, well, not all of us, but, you know, sitting at mid fifties and going, shit, is, should I start over? Should I start this? I, I, and, and especially maybe in America, we're so like, oh my God, I'm not 40 or younger and, and I don't have time. Right. But you're absolutely living proof. But there's all the time in the world. It's never too late to start something you believe in. You know, listen, who knows when it's our time? We could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be 20 years, it could be 30 years. I don't know when my time is. So what am I going to sit here wasting it, worried that I'm going to die tomorrow? I got things to do, honey. I was brought in this earth to do things. You know, I'm not, my life is not about sitting around. My life is to creating. And it's also been a journey for me to see what is my next thing I want to do. That's I tried Amazon. I'm doing Amazon. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it. See what it's like. What the hell? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that it's my favorite thing at the moment, but we'll see what happens if, after I get the end of the year. But then I talk to somebody else and, you know, I'm, I'm an opportunist. If I see an opportunity, I want to know, is it possible for me to do it? So my friend has a product. I'm talking about private labeling it. And, and it's going to be kick-ass. It's going to be so fabulous. I'm very excited. But, you know, life is not over. Life goes on. So it's like people say to me, oh, you should be retired. So what am I going to do? Sit. You know, I love to read, but I'm going to sit all day and read books. How much can I travel? I don't care if I travel. If I don't, it doesn't matter to me. It's not that important. I'm a city girl. Just put me in a city and I'm happy. But, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? Go play bingo like my mother? You know, <laughs> go play cards? You know, it's like, I don't want to do that. You know, I was going to say, um, as an entrepreneur, you have to give up so much of a life, I would think. Um, how do you balance having, and when you're an entrepreneur, how do you balance if you meet somebody and you're in a relationship, you had children as well. I, I well, just don't know how you do it all. Well, I broke up three years ago with 25 year relationship. So right now I'm not in, I'm not dating. I don't know anybody to date. I'm like, sort of like, you know, I mean, I don't know that I want to live in relationship again. I, to me, I always thought that for me, it's best that they have their own place. I have my own place. We get together a couple nights a week. They're doing their thing. We're supportive of each other. You know, that to me would work the best. And truthfully, I just want to get laid. So <laughs> other than that, yeah, isn't that the truth? I mean, you know, let's, 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 let's an open between the sheets, man. Yeah, and that's what I want. That's that's all I'm missing in my life right now. So it's now we've talked, way. stocks. can we talk death? And this is a, a, kind of a weird question, but just because it came up then, you're eight in your 80s. How do you feel about death? About death? Yeah, uh, I have, I have, a, I have a. My feeling is about death is you live and you die and it's all about what you're doing in between. You know, when it's my time to go, it's my time to go. I feel that way about animals. You know, like if my, I, I just adopted a 14 year old girl, a little dog. And it's like, you know what? When it's her time, it's her time. I'm not going to prolong her life and have it miserable and, and suffer because I can't let go. It's not about, you know, it's like, I want them, I want my ashes to go to, to a glass maker and I want them to make vases out of my ass. I, you know, it's like, it's, I'm not done. I'll come back again. I'll find the right body and I'll come back again. And you're going you know, to live through I, the lives I, you I, touch I, I, too. Huh? And you'll live through the lives you touch. They'll never be gone ever. I'll never be gone. That's true. You know, what is my legacy? My legacy is, is if I, if I can change one woman's life, to have her live in a life of abundance and live and be happy and live a life to you always wanted, then that's what I've done. You know, one at a time. If I could change one woman's life to do that, that that fulfills me. You know, it's what's fulfill. You know, what am I here for? You know, I, I, I mean, I agree with you because I, you know, and it's not like the uh, the ego sort of empowerment narcissist. 
I mean, this show provides, you know, for a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of encouragement and support and, and a voice and, and hey, and, and sort of a recognition like, well, I, I, I can do that or I, I can speak to someone like that. And it's sort of, we're all helping each other, you know, and giving each other that boost to go, yeah, it's okay. And that's why, you know, when people say to me specifically, and I'm sure the other ladies on the panel, you know, you know, when someone says to me in the beginning, I was like panic stricken with this, you've changed my life, you and your show and yeah. your opinions have changed my life. It's a scary place to be in because I'm thinking, how did I change your life? And I was like, oh no, you did it yourself. Cause I didn't, because it's not me, you know, it's you, you bring yourself to the table. And if there's something that you get inspired by any of the shows or any of the ladies, it's all on you. Don't give me credit for that. Yeah, yeah. but you know, that's not true yeah. because you give them an outlet that they can come to and they can hear you and the things that you talk about change their life. So you have to take credit for that. Do not do that. You should take credit for everything you do in your life that you change your life, everything. And we don't do that. As women, we don't take credit. You know, we don't celebrate our wins. And that to me, what is Amazing Women in Action is about, celebration. I mean, my dream with Amazing Women in Action was to rent a studio or to rent a theater and to put it out there, uh, Amazing Women in Action is coming to your city. Bring, send us a, a, a bio on who you want to celebrate, who's important in your life, what they did for you. We'll bring them on stage. We'll give them this, whatever. I mean, I wanted to make it like, like a party to celebrate women because we don't do that. We don't celebrate ourselves and we don't celebrate every win that we have. And every time we accomplish something, we just like push it aside. But we need to start celebrating ourselves and we're not doing that, you know. And Arlene, I do know, you know, I do know you're spiritual. I know you're Jewish, what born raised with the, in the, in the Jewish faith, correct? Um, yes. but you're also very spiritual, psychics, yeah. tarot readings. I mean, how much of sort of that has helped you in your journey in life to be who you are? I think it opened up things that I didn't know about myself. You know, I, we kind of go through life as who we think we are. But then it's, it's, but it's doing this spiritual stuff has really opened up things for me. Like when I followed my spiritual last, master, I didn't know I could do energy healing. I didn't know I, anything. I didn't even understand. I didn't even know what that world was about. Because I never experienced it. And growing up Philadelphia, forget it. There was nothing spiritual. No. You know. Nothing so, in Jersey either, just saying. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like I say, I'm a Philly girl. I'm a pizza sandwich girl. You know, I talk loud and I talk fast, even though I've had to slow down a lot since I've been in California. People used to say to me when I first went to San Francisco, can't you talk louder? Can't you talk slower? It's like, no, you know, forget that. But it's, it's I got to learn about more about myself that I didn't realize. I, I take that back. I might have realized it, but I didn't acknowledge it. So I got to acknowledge more of who I was. Like when people come up and say to me, oh, you really inspire me. I'm like, really, really, I ins me, I inspire you. And it's like, I had to step, take a step back and say, hey, I guess I did. Even just by being who I am. You know, I know my age has become a big thing and it's like, holy shit, 81 years old. But, <laughs> you know, I guess that is a big thing. Well, Arlene, if it makes you feel any better, you don't look a day over like 58. Oh, thank you, honey. If you went to 65, I was going to punch you out. But other than <laughs> that. <laughs> so, Arlene, you know, when women are like women are in transition, women have children. You right, know, right. You know, right. whatever. And, you know, then they want to embark on something or or even people who right now in COVID have been laid off or, right. or their businesses. I mean, what advice besides believing in themselves? I mean, what tools do you think they should need or do to sort of, you know, brush themselves off, reinvent themselves? Hmm. What tools? Uh-huh. You know, I always tell people, this is when I, when I have a client, the first thing I tell them, 
I want you to take a, I want you to take a, 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 a notepad, a journal, whatever, and I want you to get away from your house, go to a park, go by the ocean, and I want you to sit there with no tel- with no phone, no computer, and I just want you to tell them to you know what, write what you want to do, just spit it out, no dotting the eyes, no crossing the teeth, just write, 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 write. What's coming out? What's in your heart? Come from your heart, not from your head, because the head will always take you someplace else. But come down and start to put it out and see what comes out. Because when you do something like that, something totally can surprise you. It's like, oh my God, I didn't realize I even thought about that. So I always have people do that first. And it's shocking what people come up with. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I did, you know, would want to do something like that. Why not? What's your, what do you love? I love animals. Is this something we could do about animals? What would you love to do about that? What you, oh, I've always wanted to do this. Let's talk about it. Is it possible? That's you awesome. Know, so, we have a caller. I'm going to cut you okay. off. I'm going to cut you cut off, me off. We got to cut call. me off, Brian. <laughs> are they on, Kurt? Yes, they are. Hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? Hello? Hello? Hi, welcome to Between the Sheets. What's your name? Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Do you have a question for anyone in the uh, in the panel, or do you want to share something with us? Well, actually, well, actually, I don't know if I called the right thing because I don't know if you guys were psychic mediums or not. I can be <laughs> one if you want. What, what's your question? Okay, I was just calling to see if anybody from my that had passed was coming through or not because I just you know went on and I didn't know if you were like if you we're doing readings or not actually you know what this is a show that that doesn't do readings but i do tarot cards but i don't have them with me because i swear to god if i had them right by my side i would have done the reading for you oh okay but thanks for calling in thanks oh she sounded very disappointed well i can't leave the show you know maybe i should just bring the tarot cards here all the time just in case we get some of the fallout of the last show and I can just throw a few cards. Why not? It is between the sheets. Um, well, you can always bring on a medium next time that maybe can do something like that. Well, Sharon Glass is not a medium and she'll, for Cagnolacy, she'll be on next week. So, I mean, oh, not cool. next week, but two weeks from now. But, um, so do you have like a, a plan or uh, like when you have a client, you know, you have an initial meeting, right? No. Not All that. I do is work <laughs> according to, I work according to where they're at. I'm, I'm not the type of person that says I have a system and we're going to go from here to here to here. I don't know if you're ready for that. I need to see where you're at, what my instinct will tell me, this is where you need to be. Let's go from here to here to here. I go with the pace that works for you the best. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a system person. All right, I don't well, believe, for me, it doesn't work. Hey, guess who's on the phone? Valerie Milano's calling in. So let's take Val Milano's call. Val's uh, one of our rotating co-hosts. Hey, Milano. Hey, 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 hey. I finally found you. I was on something else. I guess I was on a past uh, uh, Nick Casey event, but that was wonderful to hear. I've got to learn about technology. But I wanted to talk to Arlene. Arlene's still there, right? Mm Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Arlene. If it's, it's Valerie. And if, if this question has been asked before, then I apologize because I'm a little late to the party, but can you talk about, you know, the philosophy behind uh, your amazing women in action and how is the group a new breed of the feminine uh, entrepreneur? Well, because we're more powerful, we stand in our power, we go after things. We're not being as meek as we used to be. We're realizing that we have strength and we're realizing as women that we have a hell of a lot more to offer. So that's really what the new breed of women is because we're, if you find out that more women are opening businesses, where the biggest growing businesses are from women, you know, and that was not years ago. So we're, we're, we are a new breed of women that are going out there and standing in our power and saying, we're going to create this and we want this business and we want a life like this. It didn't happen years ago because I came from that place. Years ago, we, you know, nobody believed in us. We didn't believe in ourselves. Who am I to think that I could open a business? Who am I to think that I could be successful? I'm only a woman. 
And that's not like that anymore. Women are breaking out. Now, even though it's funny because you think because in 2020 that it's running, that women are really kicking ass. And there's still so many women that are still in that same mentality of that they can't. So, but there are so many women that are, that they can. So that's where the, the new breed of women are coming out. Look at the, go, go look Thank at the magazine. You. And I just, go ahead, Val. Yeah, I just, I just have one, one more follow-up, please. Uh, what can we expect when we join your group? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, I have to say, I need a mentor to help me. With the, I kind of have an idea what I want it to be. <laughs> And I'm still playing around with it, and it's still, it's 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 evolving. That's all I can say. It's evolving. I put it out there because I needed to do it, and now that it's out there, it's evolving. I don't. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with it yet, truthfully. You know, I love the concept. I love what it means to me. It's just that you know, I got to figure it out. <laughs> I got it. Thank Any you, girl. ideas, Valerie? It's a pleasure to talk to you. Any ideas? Oh, I'll be thinking about it for you. I will be thinking about it. <laughs> I need a look. <laughs> why don't we all just join Arlene, and then we'll all be like powerful women, more powerful than we are. I think we should just go like on a like a glamping thing, like on a yurt or some shit, and brainstorm stuff. <laughs> that hey, I'm all for that. I'm with I, you, I, Dan. I, 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 and Val, you would be too, and I, well, all of us. Val, I love you. I miss you, and I'll see you soon. You know, for real. Thank you. Y'all have a great night. I'll keep watching. Thanks. Thanks, Val. Uh, so, Arlene, I have a question. Just a total segue. When do you think a woman will be president? Oh Jesus! <laughs> now that you couldn't okay. prepare for that. Okay. You no, know, I have to tell you two things I don't talk about. Politics and religion. I but stay think, away from what that. Do you think, with your <laughs> philosophy, okay. do you think a woman will ever be president? We don't have to go into detail. And I think eventually, but I don't know. We'll see it in my lifetime. What about if uh, something ha- if Biden gets in, then something happens to Biden? Then um, it's Kamala. Yeah, I think that's that's the, that's the only way that I could say it. I just don't say it. I have. I see that. Yeah, let's not wish him dead yet. Let's just get him in. Okay. And then what happens, happens, okay? <laughs> well, let it roll. <laughs> Other than that, just vote blue. Please vote blue. Um, that's all I care right now. Who cares who it is? Just vote the color, okay? Um, <laughs> so I don't really care. So, Cara, you have been extremely quiet, love. Um, what's been going through your head? Because you have reinvented yourself numerous times. Um, where did you get your inspiration from? What, where, where, what, who? Well, I, I, I have had to invent myself a couple of times or three. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure the first time around I got any inspiration. I think that's why it took so fucking long. Um, honestly, I think I'm much more inspired now that I'm in my 60s than I've ever been really my whole life. I've got through stuff. Yeah. My goodness me, it's taken its toll at the time, you know. Uh, running away from the British press for, you know, 15 years, actually, it took me to get over that. You know that that there's statistics that say that the older women are the mo- uh, that are the biggest group of women that are opening businesses. Right. Older women, 60 and older. Yes. Well, you obviously came into your power very young. You must have done, but I, I, I don't feel... No, like- I started my phone sex business. I was, I was uh, 50. Oh. So I was not young. I was young, but I was a younger. You know but. what? 50 is young. I'm still in my 50s. It's young. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. It's, <laughs> it's young. And when I turn 60, 60 will be young. <laughs> That's right. You got that right. <laughs> I and am when I turn 81 me. tomorrow, 81 is young. is not the face of a 56-year-old. And Kim is 50. We're hot. We're all freaking hot. Yeah. I don't. Care. I think the older. I think the older woman is so. You know, they bring a lot of wisdom. Like yeah. you say, the older woman has had so much experience, and and I think the older woman is being looked upon, looked up at a lot these days. 
Well, yeah, that's true. You know, it's when we come into our own. I honestly, I feel yeah. like, you know, I was a late starter. Um, I don't, I think, but I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I just would describe myself as somebody who uh, was a powerhouse until the last few years. Even though I had ups and downs and good career moments, you know, it doesn't sound to me like Arlene that like you had any bad career moves. Um, I, I've made a lot of mistakes. I think I'm also like a late starter and I always felt like that about myself. And I honestly think that like my decade is going to be my 60s. I, I just feel like that. Yeah. Yeah, 60, you know, we're living longer. We're living healthier. So who's to say what age you should stop working or stop doing your thing? Come on. You know, I'm planning a, a new thing for next year. It's going to be kicking ass. You know, and I'm going to be 82 next year. <laughs> so you know, I might, I might move out of the country. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm like a free woman to do whatever I want. Oh, Arlene, you know, marry me. I have dual citizenship to Italy. Let's go. Oh, there. I would love it, honey. <laughs> I <I'm> Arlene, <laughs> like the queen who never needs much sleep. <laughs> who? You. you. You! I wonder if you've always been, do you need, are you one of these people who needs four hours sleep and then you're up and you're off? Because you I mean, my goodness. Uh, you know, it comes and goes. If I, I actually, sometimes if I eat like uh, a lot of carbs at lunch, I have to take a nap. Carbs just knock <laughs> me out. Wow. But I go to bed usually about midnight and I usually get up about 5.30. That's ah, my schedule. Nailed it. Got it. You <laughs> are one of those schedule. people. You don't do that, Cora? No, I don't have that much energy anymore. But, I, you know, I mean, the, you know, when I was younger, I used to be party all night and get up at 5.30 in the morning and I was on the air at 6.15. Right. And I would do that. I would, like, go to bed at 4 a.m. and then get up at 5 o'clock. See, I don't understand well, the napping I thing. I, I never understood the napping thing. I know I had a problem as a child because even my mother would tell me, like, in preschool and shit, um, you know, everybody would, like, go to nap. And then I would like make believe, pretend I was napping and then just like crawl out and start making a mess and playing with myself, not with myself. I never played with myself. <laughs> not <laughs> another, story. Not another story. Wow. I want to hear that story. Bring that in. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see that one. Um, but I've never, I've That's always cool. been. And you know what it is? I mean, I think some of it is ADHD and I do have it. I, I mean, I have a very mild case of Me ADHD. Too. So I'm not, you know, I don't have medication yeah. and, you know, I also have a little bit of OCD and it's very interesting. The things, especially in OCD that set me off, um, the stupidest things, but it like, it's like, for example, like I have to be on time. I cannot not be on time. And that is why I, I have, you had to be on top. And I was just like, where did we, did I miss something here? <laughs> no, no, because you know me well, I like to be and have to be on the bottom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is me. Um, I have You're a bottom. I'm, I'm a shot. pillow queen. I'm shot. Pillow queen. Known fact. I'm all brawn, but when it comes to that, I am so not pillow queen. Um, see how many fun facts everyone gets to hear when when Kim <laughs> makes, believes yes. he hears something, and then I can't just stop. I've got to tell the truth to everybody that's watching. What my freaking sexual positions are but you know listen i used to do that i used to be a bottom and then one day i woke up and said no 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 more i'm the top no more no more Look, bottom for me. The top. i don't mind top but the thing is it, it's a lot of upper body strength <laughs> <laughs> um not uh, so much recently now i was telling kim yesterday last night because everybody thinks you know now that I, i'm like I've, i'm cut and stuff and i was talking to kim and jackie yesterday when we were at, at there at jackie's house for dinner and i'm like there's a friend of mine roxanne and i'm like oh god you know i'm gonna kick her ass you know and i challenged her to freaking arm wrestling you know and she's 10 years older than me and, and whatever and i'm sitting there struggling and two times she first started with the right hand because she's left-handed and wanted to give me an advantage she creamed <laughs> me she creamed me and then she like did the right hand and i was like on the floor dead and you know it is so anyway, <laughs> this shit. hi roxanne i think you're watching 
Um, anyway, so Mara, That's historical. Mara, yeah. Mara, I'm not going to ask you whether you're top or bottom. I think I know, but um, <laughs> not that I've experienced it. Hello, princess. But, but um, you know, you are an entrepreneur as well, and I know you. She, you know, Mara's an artist, and she's a very I'm a writer talented, too. and a writer, and she's very talented, and she's produced these web web what are they webisodes. Well, I had a column in this magazine for a while. It was fiction. Um, it was kind of like a Sex in the City uh, column, but it was fiction, and um, it was about four lesbians. Well, one of them was transferring over from the straight world because she thought it was going to be so much easier, and she was wrong. Um, <laughs> and then I had um, I've done some web series as well. Um, so yeah, and, and my art. So those are, I'm just super creative. Yeah, but Mara, art. you know, we yeah. like, like you, you are super creative, but you've said you struggle on how to get the business off the ground. Of you course. have questions for, because a lot of women, Arlene, are like that. They, they've they got the idea, they've got it, but they just don't know where to start to get it off the ground. How? What would you advise Mara and Kim and all of us, actually? You just, it's putting together a plan. It depends on what you want to do. You yeah. have to put a plan together. If you want to do what you're doing, it's like, what is my plan? If I need to get from here to here, what do I need to do to do that? I can't. Give a specific because I would have to sit and go over the whole thing with you and right. give you ideas. But I want to tell you, I had the first gay soap opera on the internet. Really? Yeah. Well, it was called gay, da gay Days, D-A-Z-E. It was years ago. I had a whole crew. Uh, it was when it was not live. It was just photos. But it was oh. written up in Variety Magazine and LA Times. and. Well, uh, were fun. you... Were you uh putting yourself in it as well as a character or no, you were behind the scenes no i was i was the one to pay for it <laughs> okay the producer, right? my my yeah. money went into that but and what happened is that we were at the, a glad event and we set up computers and all the stars that came to the glad event would come over and we people would ask questions because remember it was not live it was all you know typing it in and uh i was a little annoyed at at uh, Glad because they gave somebody else a award for what we should have gotten it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know, we were the first gay soap opera in there in person, working on computers with everybody, and we were never acknowledged. How so, can you make a soap opera though if it's photos, still photos? Like, oh, you... it worked. It worked. How? Tell me. I mean, <laughs> it I was just that they had that. photos and and we had different scenes and we had different actors and we had their pictures and they just wrote it out. Did you do a voiceover over the pictures? Was it like a, uh, a No, it wasn't live. Wow, okay. It was like in the very beginning because I had heard that there was a straight soap opera. I said, well, we need a gay one. So it was like four guys and a girl. You know, because it was more towards gay, you know, gay whatever gay is, I don't know. Yeah, who knows what gay is? I don't think we know what we are. I think uh, queer. I love the word queer. I think queer is a great <laughs> word. You know, although I have to say, and Alana, who is straight, which is, we love her, and so is Kara. I, I have to say one thing. I hate the word lesbian. There, why could it, I mean, there has to be another word yes. to describe it. I just dislike So does my ex. She hated that. that word lesbian. I'm not a lesbian. Don't use that word on me. I don't like do you hate it? Is it the connotations that it come sounds with so that? Clinical. I don't know, like a lesbian. Yeah. Like, like it's so clinical. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> sexy <laughs> about the word lesbian. You know what I mean? <laughs> nothing. Like, oh, I'm a lesbian. It's like, oh, really? You know, I mean, not I know. Like, it's just, there's, it doesn't roll off the tongue. And we know what that means. So, you know. <laughs> it is very clinical sounding and it usually brings up like, you know, lesbo and like, you know. But even the shortened versions of it, les, lesbo. Alana, as a straight woman, friends. how do you feel about the word lesbian? Is it <laughs> too boxy like it's right? too quarantined like it's too narrow i feel like there's more beauty and more uh freedom than that word shows that's nice yeah. not a pretty word so i don't know what the better word is but i there's probably a better word for it thank you i think we all should create one 
Well, there's a Saf the Sappho. I'm a Sappho. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. We like Sappho. 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 <laughs> should have all just stuck with queer. Queer. Right. I like queer. <laughs> I don't know about queer. queer. Wait a minute. Hold on. But Kim brings up a good point. And Kim really, I mean, she didn't, I don't know if she meant to bring up a good point, but for me, just by her <laughs> saying that, <laughs> I'm not sure. But that's why I love Kim because she springboards off of things. You know, about discrimination and, and and segmentation um you know in the in the any community you know within the race the different races the different you know diversities there always seems to be like that delineation even amongst within our own selves of discrimination or distinction and i think kim is right i mean why does it have to be lesbian why does it have to be gay why does it have to be whatever i mean gay is gay we're all gay i mean i'm more gay than anyone but you know it's gay why can't we just have one bubble or not for the transgender well, that's why we like queer yeah right. queer encompasses the whole thing but the does queer but does queer encompass transgender now well, queer no. also implies in a way, and I mean, I'm, this is my opinion, that there's something weird about you. I mean, I know we're all weird, but it also implies that there's something off or strange about you when you say I'm queer. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like for straight people, like they say straight, right? Heterosexual and breeder. Well, at least that's the gay version. Oh, God. Breeder. <laughs> That's an old, no, Arlene knows that's an old oh school term. Oh my God, you guys. It's an old school term. They don't use it now, but really? that's the they still do. Do they do breeder? Oh yeah. Really? I've been called that not in a nice way. Like, no, it's yeah, not. But so not many gay women are having it's babies. Gay. How can you say that anymore? Exactly. Yeah, know, that's true. But I mean, like, 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 you know, like, I, I, like, in the straight world, and again, I, I'm calling it straight world. There's no like delineation of this is a straight woman or a straight man, or there's no term for a heterosexual. That's you know, black, white you know, Asian men, woman. So I, I, I really always questioned why in fact the, 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 the parties on the fringe or the non-majority parties, why there is always terminology. Well, that because that's how, you, that's how you find out who your community is. But aren't if, we I, didn't, if I said I was a lesbian, if I said I was a lesbian, the bisexual community was, well, you're a lesbian. You're in the lesbian community. And bisexual, I'm in the bisexual community. It's a way to find out. It, it's just giving yourself a label so that you can connect with your people. That's what I always thought. But do we really need labeling anymore? No. no. I like I to think not. Question for each of you. Do you think we need, Alana, do you think, I mean, because you're the youngest of all of us, and I keep bringing it up because you have a different take on things, even though you are an old soul. Um, you know, what is your generation in the 30s, 20s? You know, what do you guys think about labeling and, and, and stuff like that? I mean, have you guys evolved? More I, don't than think a it's a, I don't think it's a thing. Honestly, I don't identify. And maybe it's just how I was raised. I just didn't really notice the differences between people. I guess I just treated everyone the same. And I, I never really wanted to think of anyone as different from one another. I just, I just treat everyone the same. So for me, there is no line, you know, and, you know, you know, my family a little bit and it's, my family is all over the place mm -hmm. and there was just no like calling anyone anything. It was just, we're all family and we're all humans. So I think the younger generations don't really see that line as much. I mean, we just don't need it. We don't need to box people in. We don't need to call names. You know, we just are human beings and you connect with who you connect with. So if I connect with a human being, it doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter anything about them, how they believe it. It's just if I feel their soul and they feel mine. So that's really all that matters. I love yeah, that but it's interesting because if somebody, if I'm in the lesbian community, and if and somebody has to say something about lesbian, I say I'm not a lesbian, I'm bisexual. And it's like a lot of women get turned off to that. I don't want to be with this bisexual woman because you've been with a man. It's like, yeah, but what does it have to do with me today? You know, I get a lot of crap around that. You know, like, but it always you could leave them for a man again, you know. They're they're all into that. Like if you're bisexual, so what you're not gonna be faithful because most chicks aren't fucking faithful. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
or they'll they feel that they'll get left to a man. Choices. We can choose a man or a woman, but it's like it doesn't work like that. I think yeah. bisexuals, bisexual, you you love the person, and it doesn't matter if they've got a vagina or a dick. You love the actual person for who they are. You know what? We got Val calling in again. Originally. Hold on, we got Val calling in again. Hey Val. Hey, uh, you know, I think I'm a hey, hey girl, hey. <laughs> I think I'm in a little delay. Um, y'all might have moved forward through the labeling um conversation, <laughs> but can I share something, please? Yeah, please. All right. So my daughter is 24 and she came out to me when she was in college she was about 18 and so when she said that she was in she's fallen for this girl in college and she really liked her da, da, da. and then I said oh so you're gay and this is her mom now and her mom is gay and I'm asking her is she gay and she says mom we don't label why are you doing this? Now, I don't wow. know if you girls know uh, because of this new generation. Is that what this whole conversation is about? That it's different? Wow. Because we're, I think all these people on your, your panel are all, all over 20. She's 20. <laughs> she was 18 when she came out. But what do you think? No, we, Alana's the youngest and she's in her 30s, but she might as well be in her 20s. Um, then there's, you know, Mara in the middle and then the rest of us are as old as dirt. Um, but, <laughs> but we look fabulous. But, um, <laughs> um, yes, and, you do big time. Uh, but the thing is, you know, I, I think this is what Alana was saying earlier, or Alana, Alana was saying earlier that, you know, it seems that, you know, her, her generation and probably younger, they are really trying consciously to avoid labeling. And I think it's our generation and maybe it's the influence of our parents' generation. I don't know, but, you know, but yes, when I came out, you know, and I think when all of us came out, I mean, you know, Kim, you, you were in heterosexual relationships, Car, you are, you're straight. Mara, I don't really know if you ever had straight relationships. I, I mean, have. I have not. I have, I'm a gold star. I have never dated a man in my life. Um, wow. what's the wow mean? What does the wow mean? Is that Valerie Milano that said wow? Really? Um, <laughs> that's me. I said wow. I, I I guess I learned something new every day from you. Well, have yeah. a cocktail, sweetheart. It'll get better. Um, <laughs> many, many, yes. <laughs> but, but the thing is, it's like you know, I you know, but you're right. When I first came out, because I didn't know what I didn't know what to claim, because I was confused. I didn't know. And I do remember that when I first realized I was gay, I was so excited. I mean, I joined, I marched for ACT UP. I like joined every gay group, you know, and then I looked at them and this sounds really horrible because I called them them. It was them and me. I looked at them out there <laughs> and I was like, I don't look like any of them because I was very still feminine and I still am. And back in the day, you'd walk into a les some lesbian bars, but they were manly, you know, manly. And that just was like, no. And that's why, like, I was telling people I was bi, because I'm like, I saw those lesbians. I, I, I would never, I, no, I'd rather do a man, you know, I, you know. <laughs> It's I mean, so I'm funny not... because I like the the butch women, the the androgynous. I, like I like androgynous too. I like androgynous. Yeah, androgynous. I even I love like that. Ditto. I like femme to Midland. That's what I like. Femme like me to Midland. To mm -hmm. to to, to may, not maybe a little sporty, but they've got to be feminine. Alana, what kind of women do you like? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's take one. Olympic lesbians. But I, I mean, I did put school for a woman once. I fell in love with a woman, but nothing really happened. But she looked like Jodie Foster. Oh, yeah. well, that's not bad as a first woman. I know. It was very, she was very lovely. Hey, hey Val, did we answer your question? Yes, I just have one more little quick thing to add is that then she says that, Mom, I can always change. That's why she didn't want to be labeled. Wow. Wow. 
right? And she recognized she had a life. Okay, but I'm too. done now. Yeah, okay. She might. Oh, we've got yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a pretty smart girl. Hey, Val, we got 15 minutes. You could sneak another one in the next phone call. Have another cocktail. Let's see. Um. <laughs> I got to go find it. I'll call you back. <laughs> Love you, girl. I'll call you back. Bye. Bye. <laughs> got to go to the bar. <laughs> We love our Valerie Milano. Actually, Valerie Milano is also um, a Hollywood life. Uh, she started that company. Um, another woman, entrepreneur. Um, and you know what I found fascinating? Because I was kind of out of the community for a while taking care of mom. And when I came back in the community, like in probably mid-2018, mid um, you know, the, the type of women that were out there, you know, they were all entrepreneurs. And if they... If they weren't successful yet, they were on the path of being successful. And what I loved about at least the people that I hung out with, and that you know, you, you, what is it? Your your vibe your vibe attracts your tribe. Is that the people in my life right now are amazing women? Period. And we just all happen to be in action. So thank you, Arlene, for being such Sweet. a preaching inspiration to a lot of people. I know you have your, you're on Facebook a lot, doing your live chats, um, you know, and, and, and giving pearls of wisdom. And, you know, so where can people find you on the internet besides the Facebook page? Do you have Instagram, Twitter? I mean, what's your social media? Uh, again, you're talking to a non-technical person. So I have uh, ArleneKrantz.com. I'm on ArleneKrantz.com, and I also am AmazingWomen.com, AmazingWomenInAction.com. So I have Facebook, I have uh, websites. So if people want meant to be for you to be their mentor or to be a coach or something, the number's on there for them to call and have an appointment with you. I mean, you're still doing consultations? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always out here to help women. You know, and they can always, you know, private message me. So anybody that you know wants to talk to me, I'm happy to talk to them. Do you have an event can... coming up? Because I remember, like, before, like right when COVID hit, you were ha you were going to have an event. Yeah, I did. I have it. It ended up being on the internet. It ended up being on Zoom. I rented a theater down at uh, Larchmont and De Melrose. It was great, and it was going to be fabulous. And I was so excited. And then, bam, COVID hit. So I did it on the internet. It was kind of fun. It was four hours on the internet. I'm like, oh my God, am I going to be able to do four hours? You know, once I get going, it's like the four hours will fly by. So I don't know, because you really have a hard time putting together some words, just saying. And before we leave, <laughs> tell us the David Bowie story. Oh, no, it was that, that was that. Um, that was the photo? That was, the, well, no, that was not the photo. The photo was uh, with Lonnie holding a thing called By and Large. Be like a like a, a a shield, a bisexual shield, and that's the one that made. Darn! I wish I had it. Oh, that, I, I, I found it. Found it. We found it. Found it. it. Found it. it. Found it and showed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that and that's a famous photo that I didn't even know until like the beginning of the year. My friend said, "Oh, I know somebody wants to put the book in your photo." I said, "My, it's on banners, Arlene. It's here. It's there. It's this." I'm like, "Really? I never even knew it." So I'm like, so it's nice. I don't care if people use it. I'm not into looking to make money on it. That's not what it's about for me. Well, Arlene, I just adore you. You know, I do. Um, I just think you are an inspiration. I mean, you are. Thank you, sweetie. To me. Um, you know, I'm glad that we're friends. I'm, I'm actually honored to call you my friend. Um, oh, that's so sweet. I feel the same way about you. It's like, cause that was like, I was following you on Facebook all the time and you would write some and then I would put something in there and then you put, I'm having a birthday party. Who would want to come? And I typed in, I'll come. And then I got invite to your birthday party. I'm like, yeah, you had some cool. It was very good. It was a cool party. Wait, and, wait, which one? Because there were like 85 of them in one that's week. True. Well, I think at one point we were up at the, like, think, I literally think we were up at like seven or eight. This was the big one. I think, I mean, I, I was, I just like, it was like my coming out party again. So I was just meeting all these amazing women and inviting everyone, like everyone. And, and it was from all my walks of life for my entertainment. I didn't care. It didn't matter if they were people and they touched my lives or I wanted to meet them or I thought people should connect. It should be, it was like a networking party. And two friends of mine really were gracious to give me their home 
to do this in because it didn't, I mean, and I invented, I think I invited 550 people total. How many people came? 275. Holy shit. Wow. And we all sang happy birthday to her. Yeah. The cake. We went out dancing at the, um, oil cans. Uh, yes. or, oh yeah. Oil cans. Yeah. After mm -hmm. that we went dancing and then I had probably seven other parties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, um, so thank you. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for joining Between the Sheets. Um, thank you for giving our listeners inspiration, giving our, our listeners confidence, some passion to see that, you know what, your life doesn't stop in your 50s or your 60s or your 70s. Sure as hell doesn't. 80s. It does. Age is nothing. Age is just a number. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. It could be a little number, a big number, but whatever it is, it's a number. And everyone, um, we're going to do this whether you want to or not. Tomorrow is Arlene's birthday. So we're going to like just sing happy birthday to her. Oh, Alana, get out Alana, of here. Alana, well, like Cara can sing well. Alana can sing well. I sing for shit. Tam, I don't know. How do you do on the singing? You sing for shit too. Um, Mara, you sing well or shitty? Shit. Shit. You don't shit? Give me that. All right. So, Cara and Alana, please sing happy birthday on, between, oh my on behalf of Between the Sheets for Arlene Franz. It's okay. You can just say it. You don't have to sing it. Why don't you and I sing the goddess birthday song? Because I don't remember the words. Oh, There's a goddess birthday song? Oh, okay. we're, well, Cara and I are goddesses. I'll fill you in on that later. Cara, why don't you sing the birthday song for the goddess? I'm an Amazon, you know. Happy. Ah. Happy birthday, happy, happy birthday. We're in love with you. We're in love with you. May happiness be yours through all the coming years and all the best to you, all the best to you. So keep on smiling every day and may your troubles melt away. May you never, ever, ever be blue. Oh, Arlene, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. Wonderful you. Wow, thank you. That was wonderful. I love that. Great. I love that. Uh, we have memory enough. retention for words. <laughs> that was great. I love the words of it. It's beautiful. It, yeah, it came from San Francisco back in the 60s, I think. 60s. Really? Can you find the words to that somewhere? Or how do we find that? I could give you the words. I, I would love that. that. I love that so much better than the old happy birthday song. <laughs> that is great. Well, happy birthday. So let me go around the room and then we'll sign off again. Mara, where can people find you? I love you. I'll see you. You may or may not be back with us in two weeks when Sharon Gless is on September 18th because you may be yeah. doing something. So where can people find you, sweetheart? Um, I have a couple places they can find me. One is um, marashaneart.com. Uh, the other is on, on Facebook, Mara Shane Custom Designs. And then my regular Facebook and Instagram is Marshing. So yeah. Well, thanks. I hope you I hope you're here for Sharon. You might oh, I hope so too. But my dad's my dad's seventy seventh birthday is oh that's that priority. Day. Yeah, I might have to be out of town for that. But um, I love every time I get to be on the show. It's always is a boost in my week. I know. I wish so we could thank do it you. every week. Hi, Arlene, find yeah. a sponsor. Hey, Kim Sanchez, what are you up to, sister? Where can people find you? You can find me rollerblading around Long Beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, Kim. Kim has officially moved back to Long Beach. Oh, ah. oh cool. Yeah, I'm a block from the beach, and the path along the beach is gorgeous, and it's just really good to be out of inner LA for a while. I, I love that. you, Kim Sanchez. Um, Cara Noble, where, what, what, where can people find you? What are you up to? Well, Cara Noble on Facebook, Cara Noble voice also. Um, what am I up to? I'm not going anywhere. I don't even have a passport. So, um, I want no, how come? To so you'll find me at home. You at home. Home. At home. At home. At home. <laughs> Cara, I'll, well, I think Kim and I'll make a trip to your place one day. Oh, yes. And then, and then Alana. Alana, Alana. I like Alana better. <laughs> uh, both work. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you, sweetheart? 
Um, you know, I work full time job, but I also uh, just bought a house with my husband. So we're painting the house. Nice. So we're making it more personalized and customized and making it our own. So that's fun. Um, what area? What area? Uh, we're in the Ventura County area. Okay. Yeah. So we're out here and um, I am a city girl too. I never lived in the big city, but I wish I had. But um, I do love Philadelphia, by the way. Beautiful oh. city. I'm taking and, uh, to, yeah, when we're... I get to sell my house in New Jersey and New York, I'm taking you with me because you're, you're going to help me pack. But B, um, because because I don't have upper body strength. But more importantly, I'll show you the city. <laughs> but my sign off, my sign off, like always, is call someone you haven't talked to for a while and tell them you love them and be there for them. Because in COVID, we aren't reaching out to each other enough. And there's someone in your head that probably needs to hear from you. So that's my sign off is call someone you care about. You are so zen. Thank you. <laughs> um, Arlene, yet again, thank you so much, sweetheart. Um, uh, it was lots of fun. Week. We're going to talk next week. See, the hour and a half went by pretty fast, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, it always does. Ah, so she fun. also watches the show. I love it. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Um, we'll be here on September 18th um, with, you know, my friend uh, since 1989, um, Sharon Gless. If you know her, she was the blonde in Cagney and Lacey. Um, right. She went off to do um, a groundbreaking LGBT show and uh, I think it was the 90s, um, Queer as Folk. Um, and then she did Burn Notice, um, most recently Burn Notice. She's done theater. She's coming out with a book, um, a tell-all book. I don't know what she can tell us all in the book because um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out, I think, uh, in a few months. Um, but she is a hoot and a holler. Uh, she will tell you everybody she knows in the business, probably people she slept with. Uh, she overcame alcoholism, um, cocaine abuse. She is an inspiration. She actually is one of my mentors. Um, I love her dearly. Um, you know, in this town, you know, everyone has, you know, everyone says, oh, such and such is my friend or such and such is my friend. And the true testament with this woman is, you know, she truly was one of the first celebrities that I worked with. And even though we don't talk all the time, um, she was a mentor to me back in the day. And nice. she took her Su and Suzanne Plachette and Audrey Meadows, uh, two or three are dead. Um, they took me as this little baby under their wing and um, taught me um, how to survive in Hollywood. Wow. And, um, and, I, and I got the, uh, the symbol from everybody called Abroad. So I made it to the Broad Club. Um, but... I, I owe this woman a lot. Um, so I am so happy that she, you know, is going to be on the show and share our stories together because we used to get in a shit ton of trouble. And um, and I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I'm not going to say any other names, but I've been a busy bee today. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Arlene and she's like, she called me back and said, sorry, I'm writing emails to XYZ. I need to get them on the show. So Did you get one of them? Not yet. Not yet. But they oh. will. I'll come. They will. They'll come and yes, they'll come. So I just want to thank all of you listeners for watching. Um, you know the mantra, love, peace, happiness, compassion, kindness, gratitude, empathy. Um, you know, me, I had a little bit of sarcasm, but nonetheless, I mean it all. Um, we are in gratitude of each and every one of you. Love, love yourself first. You can't pour from an empty cup. Um, yeah. so it's not selfish to put yourself first. It no, really it's not. And um, a lot of women have been, we've been conditioned that way. So yes, we help each other, but we have to help ourselves first because if we don't, then there's really not much we can give to ourselves. So we have to make yourself the priority. And I know that sounds weird because I keep saying that, making myself the priority, but you must make yourself the priority. You have to love yourself every bit and piece of you. And it's really hard. And I, you know, I work at it every day. And so my wish for you is to find that peace within yourself and reach out to your friends. As Alana said, reach out to someone you love, someone you don't love, reach out to people you want to meet. You know, you be the voice, you be the catalyst. 
and a kumbaya. I'm like kidding. We, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I love you guys. I want to say hi to my one of my besties, Roxy. She's watching. Finally, it's like it's past her bedtime, but she's watching. Um, and I love each and every one of you. Thank you, Arlene. I hope to see you back, all of you back with me on the 18th. Um, and I think it's going to be a fun show and it's going to be a bigger, fuller house because I want every single one of you to be touched by Sharon the way she's touched me. So I don't care if everybody's on the show. So I love you guys. Have a great freaking weekend. Be Thank safe. You, Happy Memorial. No, Memorial. What is it? Labor Day. Labor Day. I love you guys. And love always, you. my friends, thank you. And Kurt. Arlene's birthday. Thank you, Arlene. <laughs> thank Happy you. Birthday. Thank and you. As we always say, my friends, namaste. I love you guys. Thank you. Love you too. Bye. Thank you.